What's going on everyone, it's Nick, and before we begin, please remember to like, and if you're either new here, or you watch my videos regularly, and you still haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification bell, and today, we're here to talk about some football. Super Bowl coming up, I haven't even talked about the AFC or NFC Championship games yet, so I'll talk about that, and also I'll talk about the Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff trade, and... I'm also going to talk about the Deshaun Watson wanting out of Houston talk. We're going to cover all that in this video. Yeah, this is probably going to be pretty long, but I hope you can bear with me. So starting out with the Bucks Packers game, and I unfortunately did not get to see this live because I was editing another video until 2 a.m. and then I couldn't get up at 5 a.m. in my time zone to watch this game. So I had to study this one really hard to be able to really come up with anything to say about it. And first note I took is that the Bucks run blocking wasn't the best, but their pass blocking was excellent. The second quarter, the Packers just didn't execute very well in the red zone. They really should have had 14 points in that quarter instead of 10. Early in the second quarter, the Packers were able to get that 50-yard touchdown from Aaron Rodgers to Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and then the next time, they got in the red zone, and three plays in a row, just not very well executed. It was just Aaron Rodgers not being on the same page as Devontae Adams, one play, and then the next play, Rodgers' pass to Devontae Adams was batted down by Levante David. Then Devontae Adams catching the ball out of bounds, or should I say he couldn't get both feet down in bounds, which led to a fourth down and a field goal. And the third quarter, when the Packers tried to go for two, that was a well-designed play, and Aaron Rodgers made a good throw, but Quinemius St. Brown, if I botch that name, I'm sorry, he dropped a ball that should have been caught, and any competent receiver should be able to catch that one. The Packers had a chance to tie the game in the fourth quarter. It was just a poorly executed play in the red zone again on first down. Wow. Then Aaron Rodgers threw it too high for Devontae Adams. Third down, Rodgers held onto the ball for too long, and as a result, he threw to Devontae Adams while he was in double coverage, and it became an incomplete pass, and the Packers had to settle for a field goal. Statistically, you'd think, just looking at the statistics, Aaron Rodgers did outplay Tom Brady, but not exactly when you really watch the game. I mean, Rodgers did throw the ball a lot more because the Bucks did such an amazing job stopping the run, and with the pass rush, not that they ran the ball so effectively themselves, but they did do a lot better at it than the Packers did. But still, Rodgers only threw one interception as opposed to Brady's three. And the, also, the Packers did have more time of possession. You know, the Bucks' man coverage was just really tight for the whole game. Even though Brady did throw three interceptions, I know he did something right because he also threw three touchdown passes. The first interception, that was a ball that was thrown into double coverage, and it was just not a good decision. The second one, though, it was late. It was down the middle. You could probably say Mike Evans should have caught that ball, but... It was a little high though, so there is room to blame Brady for that one. The three touchdown passes that Brady threw though, those are really well executed plays. Their pass rush was also a big factor. Rodgers got sacked five times. My guy Jason Pierre-Paul had two of them. Shaq Barrett had three. But you know, a big difference maker that didn't make a difference on the stat sheet, but if you really watch the footage, you'll notice the difference that he made. Vita Vea. He came back from an injury and his impact was very much there just because he demanded a double team all game and that freed up other guys like JPP and Shaq Barrett to get to Rodgers. And oh yeah, I was going to address the third interception that Brady threw, but then I lost track of my script. I'm sorry. But that third one, you could really blame that on bad protection on the Bucks' offensive line. So much for this, right, Max Kellerman? Tom Brady's just about done. It could be his next game he plays, it could be a year from now, but he is going to fall off a cliff. Since you're the aficionado on all things Tom Brady, I'll begin with you here. Predicting the cliff about three Did years ago now. I was one year off, good. Okay. But it's here. In all seriousness, yeah. should Tom Brady retire? Yes, he should. He won't, but he should. 
I don't plan to do an exposing mainstream media, at least for now. B-Souls has got that covered for NBA YouTube. Rusty Buckets, he's done it to some extent as well, but yeah. That was a pretty awful take by Max Kellerman, wasn't it? And hey, I've had my share of bad takes too. It happens to all of us, but I at least try not to make it blatant clickbait material. Now onto the Buffalo Bills and Kansas City Chiefs, and Bills fans, I just have to say, you should still hold your heads high. It was the best season in at least my lifetime for the Buffalo Bills. I'm 27 years old and I was born in October of 1993. Bills made their last Super Bowl in January of that year and that was also the year they made their last AFC championship and the furthest they've been in the playoffs since then was the divisional round in 1995. A few more good seasons after that in the 90s but never passed the divisional round before a long playoff drought. There was also last year and also a few years ago I think it was three years ago when they made the playoffs for the first time since the 90s and I forgot who their quarterback was. I know I'm gonna feel stupid for this, and I'm not gonna cut this out. <laughs> oh right, Tyrod Taylor, he was their quarterback that year. But now you guys have a franchise quarterback with Josh Allen, so again, Bills fans, hold your heads high. That jet sweep that got Nicole Hardman that 50 yard run, a really well designed play call with their lineman blocking to the Bills left with Travis Kelsey and Nick Allegretti, the Chiefs left guard going to their right, which is where they led the linebackers and boom, Hardman just took off. But you know what else Kelsey did? Stopping, then going the other way so he can block for Hardman. It's just stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheets. Also, that underhand toss that Mahomes made to Travis Kelsey, you know, Tyreek Hill going in motion both ways. That had to keep the defense focused on him. And then Kelsey cutting across the middle. The offensive line did such a good job at blocking that even if the defense did see Kelsey, there was really still nothing they really could have done about that. And Kelsey's second touchdown, man, did he get so wide open and that was also a great play call by the Chiefs. The Chiefs were just on a roll with their play calling and that ultimately won them the game. So now on to the Super Bowl preview. When the Bucks and Chiefs faced off in the regular season late in November, the Chiefs came out on top 27-24. The Bucks offense has clicked a lot more since that game and they haven't lost since then. I still say the Chiefs will win the Super Bowl. Final score? I'm gonna go with 34-30. I'm fully expecting a thriller. I know there's a 99% chance that my score prediction will not be correct. I never have predicted the correct score of any game in my life and I wouldn't bank on this one being the first time no matter how many score predictions I give out but I'll just throw a score out there for now. I'm pretty confident though that both teams are going to score in the 30s because both teams have such a high powered offense but both teams also have a good enough defense that neither team is going to score 40 or 50 points. Although if I'm a Chiefs fan even though I'm picking the Chiefs to win this game the Bucks pass rush especially when the Chiefs are missing some of their offensive linemen that is a little bit concerning to me but considering how good Mahomes is against blitzes he probably should be fine. The Bucks do have some guys that can make plays in the back Field, but they have also been prone to giving up some big plays. I still think that the Chiefs should win though and fun fact in the 10 Super Bowls Tom Brady has appeared in this is his first one since his first ever Super Bowl appearance and victory that his team is not favored in and no just because he's not on the Patriots anymore doesn't mean I'm not gonna bring this up sorry I had to. Although the Bucks do have a really good defense that could give the Chiefs some trouble, in points allowed for the whole season, the Bucks were just marginally better than the Chiefs. The Bucks did have a far superior run defense during the regular season, but I don't think that'll matter so much because the Chiefs running game isn't exactly their bread and butter. I do think that there is upset potential because the Bucks do have the GOAT. No, he's not a system quarterback. He is the GOAT. And the Bucks pass rush against a banged up Chiefs offensive line, like I mentioned earlier, particularly Eric Fisher. I don't know the status of their other O-linemen, but Eric Fisher unfortunately tore his Achilles, so wishing him well. Hope that he has his fast recover. Obviously, it won't be fast enough for him to play in the Super Bowl. Feel bad for him, but that's just the unfortunate reality. And the Chiefs have some other guys that are hurt too, but I'm still believing in Patrick Mahomes. And I think that his supporting cash 
should be good enough to get the Chiefs the win. Tyreek Hill will definitely be a tough cover for the Bucks. The Bucks do have some guys that could potentially hold their own against Tyreek Hill, like Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean with Jordan Whitehead giving them help over the top as well, but you let Tyreek Hill get open, you're done. And even if you do cover Tyreek Hill really well, you also have to worry about Travis Kelsey, but the Bucks do have Levante David who could limit Kelsey's impact and while he was thrown at a lot, he was pretty good in coverage. So this is why I don't think that this is going to be a game where we're going to see a score in the 40s or 50s for either team. But I'm still going to stick with my gut feeling that it's going to be 34-30 Kansas City Chiefs. You guys let me know what you think. You give me your score predictions in the comments. Now on to the Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford trade, which we have to keep in mind isn't going to be official until March, but it's a trade that looks like it's going to go down. And when I first heard it, my initial reaction was the Lions got fleeced. But after having some time to think about it, actually, I think now it's the other way around. Unfortunately for the Rams, here's why. Now, Matthew Stafford, I would say is a better quarterback than Jared Goff. But when looking at their advanced stats, actually not as better as you might think and what the rams really wanted to do was dump jared goff's contract but they also gave up a ton of first round picks to do so and they gave up a ton of first round picks to get goff in the first place and now they have to bank on matthew stafford at this point in his career to be a significant upgrade over jared goff which i just don't really see when looking at their epa which you're not going to find on football reference you need pff for that and unfortunately i don't have pff myself i don't want to pay for that yeah i know i'm cheap but for those who do pay for it yeah i think that you'll really see that Matthew Stafford isn't as better than Jared Goff as so many people would think. Since 2018, Goff has only had an EPA 0.7 less than Stafford. So while yes, it's an upgrade for the Rams for now, it's not as big of an upgrade to the point where it's really worth all those first round picks. So overall, yeah, I got to give the Lions the victory on this one. And I also think that at Jared Goff's age, he does have a higher ceiling than Stafford does at this point in his career and they have all that draft capital now and finally we have the Deshaun Watson trade to talk about and Deshaun Watson should want out of there Bill O'Brien completely decimated that team with his stupidity and honestly Deshaun Watson does not owe that team a thing because they're the ones who did him dirty he's a top five quarterback in the NFL and yet the team only won four games with him because of their incompetence in the front office and coaching too. And I don't think that the Texans are going to recover from Bill O'Brien's mess anytime soon. Now, if he were to go to my Giants, as much as I definitely would rather have Deshaun Watson than Daniel Jones, I also think that the Giants would have to give up way too much to get Deshaun Watson. And I just don't think it'll really be worth it because we want to keep at least this year's first round pick to get a receiver. And also having to give up Saquon as well, definitely don't want to do that. And... If Deshaun Watson only won four games in Houston, well, at least the Giants have a much better head coach, but still, I just don't see it as being worth it for Deshaun Watson to get traded to my Giants as much as if we were to just get Deshaun Watson straight up for Daniel Jones, oh, I'll take that in a heartbeat, but I know even Bill O'Brien's not that stupid. I mean, he's long gone from there now, but no NFL GM is obviously that stupid. But we'll have to see where Deshaun Watson's going to go. I don't think he's going to stay in Houston. He definitely shouldn't want to stay there. And wherever he goes, I just hope that he's able to be surrounded with a lot better than what he's been given in Houston because man they really did a franchise quarterback dirty their best quarterback in franchise history so that's where i'm gonna wrap it up again i'm sorry for making you wait so long for my super bowl preview and conference championship recaps so again please remember to like and if you still haven't subscribed yet and you've made it this far in the video please subscribe and also hit the notification bell and i'll see you next time